Finally we get a new target in this episode. And Mason Treadwell is surely one of the favorite targets throughout the whole show. I like how they combine little Amanda and Emily again with reading the same book. Emily Allen Lynn shows again what she already can play in the flashbacks with Mason. I love the motive of Amanda as a pyromaniac. Spoiler alert, this theme comes back when we see the flashback with her and her foster brother in Season 2 and in the speech of Mason in Season 4. And it is not so far-fetched as it sounds because controlling fire is a fitting behavior for Emily who is eager to control everything in her life. I know control is necessary with her mission but it seems also be so important to Emily because she lost a great amount of control in her childhood. About Daniel in this episode. And again Daniel is asking the wrong question. Why does he not find it suspicion that Emily is reading a book about David Clark? Does he really think she tries to inform herself because she got to know that he was living in the beach house before her and Lydia? And again it is annoying how smoothly Emily can manipulate Daniel. By the way she puts the thought about marriage or at least engagement in his brain only with a lie about honoring her parents' wishes. About Emily's new target Mason Treadwell. First of all I love that they bringing him back in every season. He is still my favorite target because he has this elaborate backstory. In the flashbacks we see that Mason started as a normal reporter. He wanted to reveal the scandal behind the David Clark trial. But then the Graysons or better Victoria got him on their side. In this first scene they show his ignorant side and almost make him a cartoon-like character. Later on he gets a real profile and is some of my favorite enemies of Emily. Again Emily makes exactly the right approach to Mason. First she flatters him with fake compliments and for us an internal joke because we know that his book is a big fat lie. And then she gives him with Nolan an opportunity to write a new one and invite them into his cottage to talk about it. So she has very smoothly and quick one foot in the door. Funny as I see the two together Nolan and Emily really look like siblings in this scene. Finally Nolan and Emily are working together as equal partners. Something that was a success formula for the show. About Jack and Formanda in this episode. As I said before I like how Margarita Levieva portrays this very complex character. Formanda has many problems one of them is no impulse control and too much emotions which are heightened very fast. An enormous challenge and opportunity for an actress. Her storyline with Jack and the jealousy of Emily and her real relationship with Jack was something I enjoyed in the first season. It shows how insecure in their core Emily and Formanda are. They both are still these girls that had to fight for everything good in their life and still do. Anyway it shows that Formanda still has a problem to define her role in this game Emily is playing with her and Jack. The uncomfortable love triangle they used to keep Emily and Jack in connection was cause for much drama in season 2 and was something good in this crowned season. Anyway I like the idea that opposites attract and that Formanda is stirring up Jack's life a little bit. He just needed a better storyline than just being a bartender and Emily's backup love interest. The scene later in which he allows her to go with him to Atlantic City and have some fun is just so cute and sweet. I was always happy for them when their relationship was working. About Formanda's style in this episode. I like how they managed to bring some practical problems in. Because she had to flee after Frank's murder she did not get to bring her clothes with her so she has to put on Jack's and buy new clothes. I am happy they did not make and make over a la pretty woman with her. They could have made a scene with her and Jack and or Emily go shopping and totally altered her natural style so she could fit in better. But though it looks more than cheap I like her sexy style with the very short shorts and her bra being visible. 
Margarita really owns this trashy chic and it is something very authentic because there are many girls even in Europe who dress like that. About Victoria and Amanda Clark. It is interesting that Victoria seems to have something like a truce with Emily for Daniel's sake, but jumps at the first opportunity to gather information about Amanda. She knows exactly what a weapon Amanda can be so she needs to know what Amanda remembers and what she will do. Her behavior towards Formanda shows the audience again why it is so important for Emily to hide her true identity. She would be the first target of Victoria. Back to Mason. Again I like how they direct the viewer's attention to everything what Emily later destroys or steals. She gets the tapes which give her more information about her father and a disturbing truth about Charlotte and destroys the only copy of Treadwell's memoirs about Emily and Formander in this episode. I do not like that Emily is using and manipulating Formander like this. She brings her in real danger even more in season 2 when she gets Formander again involved with her revenge ender. Formanda is loyal and has a great sense of justice so it is easy for Emily to recruit her but it was selfish. Especially when Formanda and Jack had spoiler alert a little family. The scene with Emily, Daniel and Nolan shooting was fun. Who did they honored the promise from the beginning of the season that we would see Emily and Daniel at the gun range. But it is far better for my taste that they made no romantic or worse sexy scene out of it. With Nolan and his funny remarks the scene is far more fulfilling to watch. I know it is something we've seen many times before but I just love that Emily is holding back and when Daniel is gone we see how good she actually is. A little reminder about how dangerous Emily is or can be if you stand in her way. About Mason, Amanda and Emily. In this scene I like that Emily gives Mason the opportunity to redeem himself. She did not expect it to happen but at least she gave him one last chance. Maybe because she knew that in there was still a good person who knew about right and wrong and what he should do. And I like that Formanda is a real asset in this scene. The first and only team play with her in season 1 felt really good. I wish we could have seen more of this in season 2. Spoiler alert. If they had dropped pregnancy plot, she could have had a miscarriage or because it was actually not Jack's baby even could have an abortion. So she could have been more involved in Emily's revenge ender in season 2. I think that would have made a huge difference in their relationship. And it would have straightened out the complicated love triangle between Jack, Emily and Amanda. By the way I like the scene array with that much green in the background. Seldom we have such a natural surrounding. Mostly we see the beach because of Emily's beach house and Grayson Manor. And as in many TV shows that are made on a closed set we are indoors. But the red brick house and the green garden with the big parasol is a nice change of scenery. Victoria and him wearing the same colors underlines that both play in the same team. I like that her color scheme earlier in this episode mirrors the outfits of Mason Treadwell. Victoria is again in a really bad position with her son Daniel. If she tries too hard to talk Daniel out of his plans marrying Emily she only drives him away from her and even worse more in Emily's arms. But she cannot hold her tongue cause she is still not trusting Emily. You must give her credit for her instincts and persistency. One word about Ashley's look after Tyler went away. I like that Ashley's look has changed a bit. She does not wear these sexy and aggressive short dresses. Those floating dresses in bold colors really look good on her. I know the sexy look was more exciting but I prefer her feminine dresses. And her hair with the long curls really fits this more soft and feminine look. About Mason's flashbacks, this episode was well structured. I like how they used the flashbacks not only to tell Mason's story but to extend the suspense. I knew from the start that he would not do the right thing because in the end Mason is a weak character who follows the easiest path. 
but if you were unsure about what he will do or say about Amanda it was the right time for a new flashback to prolong the resolution. One thing about Victoria's choice here. In the flashback we get to know from Conrad that David is still trying to fight his verdict and uses Mason to have better chances. If she would have wanted to help David in this Victoria could have helped Treadwell to dig up the truth. But for that decision she would have go behind her husband Conrad and betray him in a similar way as she did with David. Anyway if she wanted it here was an opportunity to save her beloved David. Instead she choose to solve the problem in a far better way than her husband. By bribing Treadwell and giving him the opportunity of his lifetime. Funny that in season 3 and 4 it is the same move Emily aka Amanda makes to take Mason back on her side. With the promise that he can write a book about her true story. However I enjoyed that we see actually a crisis of conscience here. He was one of the first targets of Emily who showed remorse. I think the writers found the need to make Emily's targets more than just really bad people who made the wrong choice. Because after Tyler's strong storyline it would have been boring to see always the same pattern and behavior just with new faces. In contrast to season 4 his decision to betray Amanda twice seems not to lay in Mason's hands because of Victoria's threat. But he could have done something brave which would have been out of character and Emily does not really expect him to do the right thing. The writing in this scene was fabulous as was to expect because the plot is set around an author. Mostly I enjoyed that it was thrilling till the end and you almost thought that he would have written the truth this time around. Especially Emily's close-ups are great. But in the editing you see that Mason has a strong connection to Victoria. He actually speaks to her not to Amanda, who is not even in the room as far as he knows till now. Nolan's reaction towards Mason's understandable behavior shows again his lack of precise understanding of human characters. He sees more the good in people and less the bad that is there, too. Lucky for Emily cause she would have been so close with Nolan if he would not overlock some very disturbing character trades of her. Now to the actual takedown. The first takedown in a long time really showed everything we missed. The black hoodie, Nolan involved in enjoying the show. And Emily ruthless as ever. Though I do not like that she is framing Formander as her new scapegoat I love how everything goes as planned. Almost too easy Mason showed her everything which meant something to him that she could destroy later. Final thoughts on the takedown with flashback. I adore how they show us that in fact Emily has not changed since she was a little kid. She is still a pyromaniac and she still cannot cope with loss and anger. So in a way as Nolan says in season 3 there is still this little betrayed girl in her that wants revenge. The only thing the training with Takeda achieved is that Emily is more focused and determined to plan her revenge. So if it serves her aim to get even she can control her emotions. Last thoughts on editing. I like the combination of the consequences of Emily's takedown with Mason's reaction and her going to Daniel only wearing lingerie. It combines sex and crime a mixture that always works in entertainment. And it underlines that Emily has no remorse when she is revenging. She really thinks she is doing the right thing so why cannot she enjoy herself after her work is done? And because she knows Daniel is thinking about getting engaged to her it is the right move to play the best girlfriend he has ever seen. It is also far easier for her planning her revenge when Daniel is not around. I think that was the main reason why she tried to keep him out of the beach house for so long in season 3 even though they were engaged again. In season 3 him being back with her in the beach house was a huge problem. About the new videotapes Emily got with the interviews of her father. It is too sad that David never really knew how Victoria betrayed him. If he knew he would have been not that stupid in season 4. 
although I think there is a pattern with him and the women he falls in love. But that belongs to the last season. Now about the greatest revelation, Charlotte is Emily's half-sister. As I said before the idea is more than great but they lost much potential here. The plot between Emily and Charlotte could have been much more interesting in season 2 and even 3 if she knew about Emily's true identity far sooner. And even if she did not know they could have shown more how Emily tries to connect with her cause she is for a long time in the show the only family Emily has left. Emily mentions this a lot in season 4 but we never really have seen her act as Charlotte's sister in all seasons before. Though there were multiple times when Charlotte could have needed some support from anyone who is not part of the toxic Grace and family. Maybe season 1 was too early for Emily because she finally got closer to Nolan and opened up a little bit. But in season 2 I would have expected to see more of the two together. Instead they brought Charlotte and Formander together. Not a good combination if you think about Formander's spoiler alert pregnancy and her unstable character. She is not the right person to bring Charlotte back on the right track. Emily really let her down which was even worse in retrospect because Charlotte always thought that she had lost Amanda twice. So I can totally understand her outburst in season 4 spoiler alert when she finally gets to know the truth. A last thing I noticed about the episode title infamy. With this revelation there comes a new layer to the title. First and most obvious we have the infamy of David Clark. For the world he is a devious banker who financed terrorism. Then we have the infamy of people like Victoria and Conrad Grayson who framed David Clark while in fact they were responsible and the infamy of Emily's new target is his silence and complicity. But at last there is also Victoria's shame who had an affair with David Clark and gave birth to his daughter. So she is either way a case of infamy. In truth she framed an innocent man and lied to her husband and daughter about who her biological father was. And in the story they spin she had an affair with a convicted man and has brought shame over her daughter because she has always the burden of her connection to this man.